Hi everybody, Mrs. Coates here. Today we're going to start the Industrial Revolution. So before we get into all the interesting people and politics and all of that, let's take a review of the time um, when we looked at sort of the market revolution and a technological revolution. <laughs> So there were several causes of rapid industrialization in the United States at this time. The first one, as you can imagine, is the railroad. This fueled the growing U.S. economy. It's considered the first big business in the United States, and it became the key to opening the West from um, all those folks moving out West. It became a key to traveling so quickly and the settlement of cities and um, huge population increase. So, and then because of this, the railroad aided in the development of other industries. So take a look at this map. There are all, all wherever you see red is where there are railroads. So this is about 1890. Um, and the period between 1880 and 1890 was one of the most rapid expansion of railroads. So you can see here in the bottom here, it says more than 70,000 miles of new lines were uh, created, bringing the total network up to uh, over 163,000 miles. I mean, it's just amazing how much the United States grew at this time. So what is the impact of the railroads? Because we know by studying history that one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. And it's all these huge impacts that sort of make up the story of the United States. So one of the biggest impacts of the railroads was that towns begin to develop around them and they eventually turn into big cities. The other thing, which not a lot of people realize or understand, is that time zones developed to help with train scheduling. And um, we'll get more into that at a later time, but kind of interesting. So some causes of, uh, continue with causes of rapid industrialization. So you may have heard of the word patents. And what this does is if you invent something new, you then can put into the government a uh, what they call a patent inquiry. And what that does is it makes it so that nobody else can copy your design. So at this time, there's lots of new inventions. Remember, we looked at a lot of them earlier on. And there's a lot of patents that are put in the U.S. government. So as you can see from this chart, from 1850 to 1900, it was tenfold. 221,000 patents are put in with the United States government for all this to own the rights to their new invention. So one of those was the Bessemer process, and you know because this isn't an engineering you know course, so we'll just quickly tell you that the Bessemer process was a steel making process that allowed the steel to be more malleable and sort of eat strong, but still able to build things out of. Which then, as you can imagine, went into all kinds of processing for different goods. We're going to talk um, just for a minute about Edwin Drake. So he was sort of the first sort of oil tycoon in the United States. And he was a major player in the oil industry as this Gilded Age goes on. Um, and a byproduct of oil, as you know, is gasoline. But as they drilled for oil and made it so that it was a form of energy, they just threw the gasoline out. And so until cars came around and they ran on gasoline, the gasoline didn't do anything. I just threw it out and it sort of polluted the, the earth and, and all of that. And then, of course, there's Thomas Edison and his light bulb. You probably studied him um, in elementary school. And George Westinghouse also with power and energy. And Westinghouse is still around today making all kinds of different uh, products. And then Alexander Graham Bell, the telephone, 1876. Um, again, probably someone that you studied when you were in elementary school. The phonograph is really cool, sort of the um, kind of the predecessor to the record and then the tape cassette and then the CD and then now our phones that carry all of our uh, music on it. Um, but you can imagine once you can bring music into a person's home, you can imagine sort of the, the change of lifestyle that you have. Um, and then, of course, selling those records is another becomes another money maker and then the motion picture camera another really cool cool um, invention created and this allows people um, eventually to go to the movies 
Um, and that is becomes a very, very popular uh, pastime, just as it is today, um, but it's a little bit different. And then we've got the airplane, right? So you've got the Wright brothers here, Wilbur and Orville Wright in Kitty Hawk in 1903. So another, um, another patent put forward uh, with the airplane. And everybody knows the Model T, the automobile, Henry Ford. And what, what Ford is known for, he's known for many things, but what Ford is known for is wanting to bring the automobile to the average worker. So he wanted to pay his workers so that they could afford to buy his car. So he made them really cheap. And he also was able to make it so that his people could buy them on time, on credit, and pay them off over time. So he wanted to pay his people enough so that they could afford his product, but he wanted to make a product that was super affordable because of that. So um, that was one of his goals. And that becomes a model they still try and stick with. All right, so other causes of rapid industrialization. You have a huge um, skilled, unskilled and semi-skilled labor force in the United States who can work those factory lines. You've got a new talented group of businessmen and advisors, these entrepreneurs, which we'll study later on in the week. You've got a market growing as US population increases. So remember at this time, the United States is a pretty young country in terms of age. Um, they don't, the people are very young. The average age is something like 25, 28. Remember all that movement west, all these young folks moving, settling down. Um, and then with the advent of the railroad, that becomes even more so. And then you've got government willing to help at all levels to stimulate economic growth. So here we go again with the big business, I'm sorry, big government, government giving loans, government giving patents, wanting to give people money to start their own business, you know, low interest loans, for example. So government trying to stimulate the economy to get it going and trying to help those entrepreneurs. So sort of a government public, which is the public entity, and then private business partnerships. And then, of course, there's an abundance of natural resources. Okay, so we've got our causes of rapid industrialization at the turn of the 20th century. So there's your overview. From here, we're going to look at these businessmen, and we're going to decide, were these captains of industry, people who really wanted to stimulate the economy and you know give people jobs, or were these robber barons? Were these people who took from the writ, took from the poor and made themselves wealthy at any cost? So that'll be the next video lecture, the next segment that we look at. So now be sure to take a look at where your notes. You should have taken Cornell notes on all of this and make sure that you've got everything written down. The good thing about this is you can always go back and listen or write something else down. You can go at your own pace with these video lectures. Email or text with any questions and I will talk to you soon.